This story starts with a loving couple named Mr. H and Mrs. E enjoying their life in Las Vegas. The couple has kids and grandkids that visit every now and then, but the for, for the most part, it's just the husband and his wife, and that's the way they like it. They both work, and every now and then the husband leaves to complete special assignments. All the assignments are given to Mr. H via phone from Charlie. Neither Mr. H nor Mrs. E has ever seen Charlie, and these assignments are separate from the normal work that Mr. H does. morning, Mr. H gets a call from Charlie, telling him there's a special assignment that requires his expertise in Miami, Florida. The assignment will take three to five days to complete, and the travel packet will arrive by FedEx as soon as they get off the phone. Sure enough, as soon as Mr. H gets off the phone, the doorbell rings. It's FedEx with the delivery. The travel packet contains a round-trip ticket on Southwest Airlines and a room reservation at the Fontainebleau Hotel in South Beach, Florida. The airline ticket is for Southwest, since Mr. H will have to take quite a few bags with him to complete his assignment, and on Southwest Airlines, bags fly free. Mr. H tells his wife that he has another assignment from Charlie and will be gone about a week. Mrs. E responds by saying that she's used to his assignments and understands. The next morning, Mr. H heads downstairs to his secret room to pack his bags for the trip. In his bags, Mr. H packs a camera, binoculars, radio, rope, duct tape, grappling hook, surveillance equipment, and a code book. Like the Boy Scouts, he's always prepared. Once he's packed, Mr. H tells Mrs. E that he's leaving. She tells him to hurry back once the assignment is done. Mr. H arrives in Miami, picks up his car, and heads to the hotel. He takes his bags to his suite and heads downstairs for a few drinks. The next morning, Mr. H gets a call from Charlie, saying that the details of the assignment will be slipped under the door. Mr. H gets the details, reads them, and prepares for his assignment. The first couple of days are usually spent in preparation, followed by a dry run, and then the execution on day five. This assignment proved much simpler than anticipated. The surveillance, both audio and video, only took one day to complete. The dry run occurred on day two and execution on day three. Mr. H finishes his assignment quickly and successfully. Since he has some time to kill, he says to himself, I can enjoy South Beach for a while. So I'm not expecting to be home for several more days. It's party time. Yeah. Mr. H's first stop is the Blue Bar of the Fountain Blue, known for its signature drinks, hot women, and wild dancing. Oh, 
just what you want. Their fun lasted for two days, but alas, all good things must come to an end. Mr. H had to get back home to his wife. While packing, he realized that his travel documents were missing. He couldn't call Charlie or Mrs. H for a, a return ticket to Las Vegas. Mr. H knew he would have to find other means of transportation to get home. So to give himself time, Mr. H called Mrs. E and said that his assignment had been extended another week. Since the southern tip of Florida is surrounded by water, Mr. H's first mode of transportation was by sailboat, but he also needed equipment for his journey, so his next stop was Dick's Sporting Goods. While at Dick's, picking up a life vest, flares, a compass, skis, hiking boots, gloves, and other equipment for his trip, he spotted four men buying the same type of equipment. He struck a, uh, struck up a conversation with them and found that they too were headed to Las Vegas using the same modes of transportation, sailboat, RV, skis, and foot power, hiking. They agreed to travel together and share the expense of the trip. So they sailed through the Gulf of Mexico, stopping on the coast of Alabama, where they ditched the sailboat and rented an RV. They drove the RV to Mississippi, where they realized the RV was no longer a viable means of transportation due to the altitude of the mountains. They started hiking and then moved on to the skis due to the snow on the ground. It was a long trek, but they finally made it to Louisiana. Once in Louisiana, they stopped at a Motel 6 to shower and rest. As Mr. H settled in for the night, Charlie called. Charlie had another assignment for Mr. H and wanted to know why he wasn't at home since it was a quick assignment. Mr. H responded by saying he decided to stay in South Beach to party and lost his airline ticket home. Charlie told him a bag would be delivered to his door with details for the next assignment and travel arrangements to get him home quicker. Mr. H tells Charlie that there are four men traveling with him and Charlie says that he'll include travel arrangements for them as well. Charlie warns Mr. H not to open the bag until he reaches the state of Texas. The next morning while hiking, the others noticed that Mr. H had a bag they hadn't seen before. They asked about the bag and were told it wasn't anything important. This, of course, didn't satisfy their curiosity. The men grew tired and stopped to rest. Mr. H went to sleep under a tree, leaving the bag near him. The others began to talk amongst themselves about what was in the bag. They speculated there might have been poker winnings in the bag. One of the men picked up the bag and went to another area where Mr. H was unable to see them and opened the bag. They were immediately zapped by lightning bolts. This caused Mr. H to wake up. He knew right away what had happened. They opened the bag. In Texas. And that's why I hang my hat in Tennessee. Once in Texas, Mr. H opened the bag and took out a one-way ticket on Southwest Airlines to Las Vegas. Remember, on Southwest Airlines, bags fly free. He finally arrives home and reunites with Mrs. E, where they live happily ever after. The end. Even when there's no one sitting there.
Thank you. 